Good evening and welcome to evening prayer on this Thursday, the 16th of September. St. Paul's has been very busy with people getting the church just right for the installation this evening of Janet Binns as uh, associate priest, as well as area dean for Stout and Burnham. So please do hold her in your prayers this evening uh, for as she is installed by Bishop Allen and as she begins her ministry within the benefits. And I'm sure we'll all get to uh, see lots more of her and we'll get to know her a lot more as we go. Um, so this morning we looked at Ninian, uh, St. Ninian, uh, who was uh, the apostle to the Picts. And this evening we're going uh, a little bit different. I'm going to look at Edward Pusey, who was a, a clergyman. Uh, he was a Tractarian and who died in 18, uh, this day in 1882. Um, so um, Edward Bou um, Bouvier Pusey was born on 22nd of August 1800. Uh, he was born uh, in Pusey House in the village of Pusey, which was in Buckingham, which is now part of Oxfordshire. <coughs> and uh, he was uh, born uh, of the the younger son of Jacob de Pusey of uh, the first Vicomte of uh, Folkestone. Uh, he uh, so so he you know, fairly fairly decent background. He attended prep school in Mitcham. He then went to Eton. I don't know, it sounds fairly close by. I'm not sure about that. And uh, then he. Uh, he went to go to Oxford, um, where he uh, w was uh, elected uh, in 1823 as a Fellow of Oriel, and he joined with fellow Tractarians John Henry Newman and uh, John Keeble. So we've, if you kind of cast your mind back through the months, uh, we have mentioned both of these people. And so these three, along with others, um, they were theologians, they were priests, they were academics, and they also uh, revived within the Church of England a more Catholic understanding of prayer and worship. And indeed, uh, um, Pusey managed to get himself suspended from preaching for two years uh, following uh, a sermon at the university um, in May 1843 called the Holy Eucharist, a comfort to the penitent. Um, this condemned sermon uh, apparently sold 18,000 copies. I mean... It's just amazing. That's, yeah, the idea that the, the, the uh, sermon could sell, sell so many is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and so, yeah. And so he was, um, he, well, Pusey was a great proponent of uh, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And so with the Eucharist, there are um, different ways in which we can understand what is happening. And actually, there's a lot we can talk about, actually, how, uh, whether it is just bread and just wine, or there's a spiritual difference, or there's the real presence of Christ within it. Um, and so this is a bigger conversation, which I'm not going to do uh, today, but do do have a look into that if you are particularly interested. Um, and so um, Edward Pusey later on has a house named after him in Oxford. Um, and uh, he is uh, and there are those that the library which he left behind is phenomenal. Uh, if you are the sort of person who likes uh, books and especially uh, theological books, then it's a good place to go. And there's lots of historical stuff there. Uh, so a really fascinating character. So we shall pray for um, for um, Edward Pusey, give thanks for his teaching, his controversy, but also give thanks actually for that recognition of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Um, but mostly we're going to be praying for uh, Janet Binns as she prepares this evening to be installed uh, into the benefice, and we look forward to working more with her in the days, weeks, months and years. Um, so as we come together, as we reflect on the day that has been, let us come together and let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night, to be praised and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray of one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, may, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this evening is Psalm 39. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days. I said I will keep watch over my way, so that I not offend with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are in my sight. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I kept silence, but to no avail. My distress increased, my heart grew hot within me, while I mused the fire was kindled, and I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days, that I may know how short my time is. You have made my days but a hand's breadth, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand upright are but a breath. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain are in turmoil. We heap up riches, and cannot tell who will gather them. And now what is my hope? Truly my hope is even in you. Deliver me from my transgressions, and do not make me the taunt of a fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth, for surely it was your doing. Take away your plague from me. I am consumed by the blows of your hand. With rebukes your sin, for sin you punished us, like a moth you consume our beauty. Truly everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am but a stranger for you, a wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn my gaze from me, that I may be glad again, before I go my way and am no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lord, let me know the number and end of my days. Our second psalm for this evening is Psalm 40. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God, how great your design for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim them and tell of them, there will be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin you have not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it. Your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I do not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come upon me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs on my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed, who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame, who wish me evil. Let those who heap insults upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, The Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh my God, make no delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonite, and Hittite women, from the nations concern, concerning which the Lord has said to Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they, be, um, shall they with you, for these will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarta, the goddess of the Sidonites, and Milcom, the ab abomination of the Amorites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not completely follow the Lord, as his father David had done. And Solomon built a high place in Cheshmos um, to the abomination of Moab, and Molech the abo uh, abomination of the Amorites, and on the ma mountain of East Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who offered incense and sacrifices to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon, he but because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this matter, that he should not follow other gods. But he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your mind and you have not kept my covenant, my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give you one tribe for two, to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of the Jerusalem which I have chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All the nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our New Testament reads a continuation of the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 to the end of the chapter. While Paul was in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicureans and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinity. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the um, Areopagus uh, and, and asked him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling and hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way, for as I went through the city and looked carefully at the object of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gave, gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the time of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so they would not search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think what that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. 
When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined with him and became believers, including Dionysus, the um, um, Aragopite, and the woman named um, Dam Damius, and others with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. How beautiful are on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things, things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the day that has been. As the day draws to a close, we ask that you'll be with us this evening. Be with especially Janet Binns as she prepares to be installed into this benefit. Watch over her, Lord. Inspire her ministry. Guide her in all that she must do. Help us to support her in her, in her ministry. Help us to grow in love and faith as she grows in love and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the life of your servant Edward Pusey, for his commitment to the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, for his teachings, for his, his learning, for his preaching. We pray for all who are seeking you, for all who seek you in the Eucharist. We pray for all who are benefiting from his legacy in Oxford. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the government, for Parliament, for the Council, for all who are in positions of authority. We pray that they may work for the good of all people, that they may not be distracted by partisanship. We pray for all who are charged with care for others, that they may work diligently, that they may show compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are in education at this time. We pray for those who are attending university, for those who are in our schools and colleges. We pray for those who have been unable to return to school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray for those who are in hospital. We pray for those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Ella, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Robert, and Rose. 
We pray too for those who are known to you alone, Lord. We pray also for those who are reaching the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray especially for Susie, for those who are coming to terms with her loss. We pray for all who grieve and all who carry the scars of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and, ever and everlasting God, who called your servant Ninian to preach the gospel to the people of northern Britain, raise up in this and every land heralds and evangelists of your kingdom, that your church may, may make known the immeasurable riches of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray of confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. and again at 5 p.m. for morning and evening prayer. Please do hold Janet in your prayers this evening at 8 o'clock as she's installed. And this Sunday, it is the third Sunday of the month, so we'll have at 8 a.m. a BCP Holy Communion at St. Mary's. Uh, this will be followed at 9.30 by fun on Sunday morning um, at St. Thomas's. And then we'll be back at uh, um, St. Mary's for 11 o'clock for the Eucharist, um, which will also be streamed online. But until we see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good evening.